chapter two in our textbook is all about creating files. So in our first lecture or uh, lecture videos, if you watched my videos, I talked about the idea if you chose file new, there are all these cool options. Um, this lecture is going to talk about that. And we're kind of just going to get the tip of the iceberg on this. There's lots of different file formats that Photoshop can create, and there's a reason to use each one. Right now, we're going to talk about it kind of in a broad way. And as we hit things that you might want to use those files for uh, throughout the semester, we'll go in more detail about specifics. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the slideshow. You can follow along if you want to. Uh, creating files chapter two, we have a handful of objectives. Uh, first, we need to identify where Photoshop files can come from, which I talked a little bit about in the first lecture. Uh, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail in this lecture, however. We're going to talk about different file formats that Photoshop can accept, and I'm going to give you a little tip for file save as versus file export when we get there. We need to understand how new documents are created and the options that are available to users, and most importantly, why we have those options. So anybody could open up a program and hit File New and create a document, but if you understand the settings and why you would want to choose one set of settings over another, that empowers you to create different types of outputs. We are going to talk about calculating image size and resolution uh, for printing and for web images. If I have time, I will talk about cropping images. Um, it's important that you always know what you start with in your file. Um, you do not want to open a file and edit it for a week and a half and then realize that you didn't have enough pixels to print the image at the size that you want. We'll talk about properly saving and organizing files and then I'll direct you to another video on using Google Drive um, to organize your work. And so in our class, I would like you to submit all of your coursework through Google Drive because you can leave it on there and you can save it. And also it allows you to post your artwork, uh, your projects really fast. Uh, Canvas doesn't really like student uploads, especially from the Photoshop class where files could be huge. But Google Drive doesn't care. It basically gives you unlimited storage. And then we'll explore the save as and export options from Photoshop and identify different file formats that Photoshop can either open directly or it can create from a file that you're working on in Photoshop. So let's get started with where do I get Photoshop files? And so this should look similar to uh, the last lecture. And you can create your own files from scratch. You could choose File New and you can create a file that has all the settings that you need for your particular project. You could open up a file, let's say a JPEG that you have from somewhere, and you can convert it to be a Photoshop file. You can choose File Save As to convert it. Or you could open up a file that you already have that's already a Photoshop file by choosing File Open. And what we talked about in the previous slide show was that it's important to me that you're not editing your original files and that you're saving a copy. And I would like you for good Photoshop practices to always work in a Photoshop file format. And so if you find an image on the internet or you download it from your digital camera or somebody sends you a file, I would like you to choose File Save As and convert it to be a Photoshop.psd we're going to call that our working file format. And just as a, a quick recap, we're going to do that for two reasons. One, it makes a copy, so we're not going to edit over the original in case we mess up horribly and have to get back to it. And secondly, um, it makes it a Photoshop file format, which is a native file format of Photoshop, which allows all of the Photoshop features to be applied to that file format. And so Photoshop wants to create Photoshop files, and so we want to use Photoshop files to make Photoshop happy. In addition, um, you can find images in a variety of sources. And so for our class, um, for most of the, the demos that are hands-on, I'll say you can just pull up any image that you want for practice. I'll supply you with some images. Most times I'll give you JPEGs expecting you to know that you should convert it to be a Photoshop file. Um, for projects, I might give you some source images, but I'll always leave it open-ended and say, um, in addition to these images, you can use whatever images you want as long as they are licensed for reuse by students or they're your own images. And so you can capture images on a digital camera. You can even capture them on your phone. Uh, most phones these days have pretty good resolution. And later in our slideshow, I'll show you how to figure out how big the image could be for your project. And as long as it meets those requirements, then you can use it for your project. In addition, you can have images that you scan. Maybe you have pictures from your childhood that you found and you want to use them in your projects. You can scan them and digitize them. 
you could create a new document from scratch like we talked about on the previous slide and that would be creating a new document. You can also paint. You can create your artwork from scratch. You don't have to start in Photoshop with a photograph. You could create original artwork. You could hand paint it if, if you really wanted to.